Well, it's very nice to be here. Um, John has been one of my um, head of my uh, uh, fan clubs for a long time, so it was hard for me to say no when he asked me to come up here and speak. Um, I wasn't quite sure what everybody's level of expertise was. John uh, said, you know, there's lots of very knowledgeable people up here. So he said, well, you could uh, bore them with all of the details of everything that's going on architecturally and prefab construction, or you could uh, do a, an advertisement for your books, which uh, an obnoxious advertisement for your books. So, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just give you kind of a, a, a roundabout uh, overview of uh, how I see the prefab industry. And um, I would really appreciate if you um, have questions, you can just jump right in and ask questions or stop me. And uh, I'm really happy to direct the information towards whatever interests you. I thought I'd start off with the question that I get every single time I do a talk. People want to know, are you an architect? Are you a builder? And this is universally um, the biggest question. So I thought I would kind of tell you how I became an interested in writing these books. Um, I had actually been in the fashion business for many years, and my husband and I bought a house that needed a major renovation. And I knew absolutely nothing about home construction. The architect, I hired an architect, and he said, um, do you want uh, double hung windows or casement windows, and I like oh, <laughs> I didn't I didn't know what the difference was between these uh, windows. So I, as a researcher by nature, I went around and got lots of information, uh, built my house, um, and nine months later, I decided it would be a really good venture to write a book for all of those people that were in my sh my. Uh, position so that they would know how to build their own dream house. And so I wrote that book thinking that that was going to be the only book I'd ever write in my life and completed that book. It did nicely. And before I could turn around, I got a contract for two more books. And um, I wrote another book, which was kind of a dictionary of everything you want to know. And a lot of architects love this book. It has everything you want to know about windows, doors, mechanicals. It took me like 18 months to write, um, and it was, um, I don't think they sold a whole lot of copies, but it was a great education for me. But um, I, my publisher came back and said, we want another book. And I said, there's no way I'm going to do another book that's going to take me a year and a half like this. And you know, it was just a very arduous task. So they said, was there anything in this book that really appealed to you? And I said, I really loved the chapter that I did on alternative types of construction. And they said, well, great, do a book on that. And I did another book, which was called Modular Mansions. And I got a lot of abuse on Amazon because the houses were so large. But the point of that book was really to show people that prefab and site-built house are not that dissimilar in nature. So. I want to play a little game with you guys, if it's OK. And um, um, I'm going to ask for some volunteers. And all, it's you know, not a big deal. You just have to say whether you think the house is site built or prefab. So do I have anybody that wants to volunteer to do this? <laughs> there, actually, if you, uh, whether you win or lose, you get a copy of my first book. So <laughs> it's not like how to. You know how to become a millionaire. It's you know really no losers. So um, anyway, let's start with the first house. So do I have a volunteer? Okay, there we go. Great. Okay, so what do you think? Stick or prefab? Stick. Stick. Okay. Stick built. There you go. One more. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you think it's prefab? Okay, let's take a look. Uh, it is. It's modular. So I think ordinarily people would think this is probably uh, stick built because it has so many different lines, but in fact it's a modular. So 
thank you very much for <laughs> participating. We have, I have some more, some more houses. I have another volunteer. You can't lose. Okay. Okay, good. What do you think? I think that's a stick house. You think that's a stick house? Okay. You're right. There you go. This group is way too smart for me. <laughs> I've done this at AIA conventions and, um, and IBA, uh, international builders shows with all builders, and they, they don't get it. So you guys are just smart. Um, okay. Stick or prefab? Prefab. Okay. That's right. Um, I guess you're all familiar with structural insulated panels. And Not really. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Very good. Okay, I have two more. The big challenge is getting this to work properly. Okay. Who's going to be my next victim? <laughs> Do I have somebody? Okay. Prefab. You think it's prefab? Um, that's interesting that you say that. That actually is prefab. This is one of the largest prefab houses that was ever built in this country. It's 26 modulars. I, I actually went on this. I mean, it's just a huge house on the Cape. <laughs> Who's the manufacturer of that? Do you know? Uh, that house was built by Epic, I believe. Okay. This is on uh, Defusky Island. Stick? <laughs> Modular. <laughs> but you still win. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the point of this exercise is, I guess, that you all can um, understand is that prefab is indistinguishable from, from uh, site-built houses. And although I've been writing these books for years and I speak about this all the time, I still get people that say, oh, it's like a double wide, right? It's like a trailer. <laughs> and um, I think that still exists. Um, this is what I guess people are still thinking prefabs look like. And in fact, they have evolved. This is a house out in the Hamptons that I actually went to see. It's absolutely gorgeous. And this was built by uh, a builder for himself, and it's magnificent. And this was the first house that I saw. I live in Greenwich, Connecticut, and this house was being set. And when I went to uh, see this house, I, I was standing in the rain while they lowered the boxes into place. And the next day I went and walked through the house, and actually there was a ladder there because the steps weren't in, but went to the second floor and the house was almost complete. And that's what really sold me on prefab because I had watched my house being built with the rain coming in and, and the moisture and the wood was rotted and I wondered how it was ever going to survive all of this, this uh, water. And you know, this house was, was put together in a few days and quite remarkably. So the myths, I guess, that people think about prefab is that still that it's unattractive and boxy and um, they're shabby, they're delivered on wheels and um, um, uh, that they're difficult to finance. And I think people always think of the old Sears houses. But in fact, the old Sears catalog houses, there's quite a few of them in my town and maybe you have seen some of them around and they're still standing and they're really in, in very good shape. So they were really, really good houses. Um, I guess probably many of you already are familiar with the reasons to use prefab. And um, I guess the reason that I'm such a proponent of prefab is mostly for the environmental reasons, because the dumpsters that are uh, in front of site-built houses that are filled with all the wood and debris, all of that stuff is what the homeowner is paying for. And in fact, um, in a prefab house, all of that, that stuff, the wood, the, the um, metal, the uh, drywall, is all being recycled. And, um, and for all of the reasons here, the 
um, the energy efficiency, the strength, and so forth. Um, the green aspects of, of prefab are, are plentiful, and um, uh, a lot of the houses that I'm seeing now are so energy efficient. They're, uh, most of the um, passive houses, which you might all be familiar with, are being built prefabricated because they're so efficient and it's such an easier way to, uh, to create a, an efficient um, house. Um, this is uh, actually Connor Homes where uh, John worked uh, for a time and they were kind enough to, sh to send these which is unbelievable. This shows how they stack up all this, the ends that they use in the factory and as opposed to a typical construction site where they're building on site. Is that how it looks, John? In that car, that's exactly how it looks. Amazing. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a reason to, um, to think about it. I think that more and more I'm seeing, um, I have just been writing lately about very energy efficient houses and very sustainable houses, and besides the fact that they're uh, higher value. Um, uh, in California, they did a study recently that showed that, uh, pre that very energy efficient houses were selling for 9% higher than other, other non-efficient houses. Um, and people also say they're more comfortable because you don't have the, the heat and the cooling coming on and off as quickly. Uh, people save money on energy and they are healthier because a lot of these uh, houses do not have forced air systems so they, they don't have pollutants being spread throughout the house. And we know that they're better for the environment because there's less fossil fuel. And then just some additional things that I think we can all appreciate with the economy the way it is is that it's supporting um, it's according to the uh, National Home Builders Association, they're creating 8 million jobs and adding $554 billion to the um, domestic product. And we see this when we go to home shows, we see a lot of new green products that are so much more efficient and, um, and they're, being, they're being picked up more and more. And so I think that we're doing, we're buying a lot of these, Ameri a lot of these are being made in in this country, which is also a very good thing. Um, I saw this not too long ago on the internet and I had to, um, I've been using it. I think it's just a great uh, thing. Um, what if it's a big hoax and we create a better world for nothing? Um, we hear a lot of people saying that, oh, you know, there's no global warming and all of this and, you know, so what if we do all this and, you know, it's, it's, I think it's just a really cute um, a cartoon by Joel Peck, who's a, a wonderful um, cartoonist. Um, probably this group is very familiar with the different types of prefab, but um, I think that very often when, the, when people that I meet think of prefab, they associate it with modular, but I write about all different types of prefab, including panelized and SIPs, log, timber frame, and there's also concrete and, and steel frames, etc. This was a house actually that um, Connor Holmes built that uh, John might have designed. And it's a wonderful house in Chatham and it has all the bells and whistles and I believe I have a picture here of um, the solar panels. And, uh, this house was built to be extremely energy and water efficient. And this was done with panels. And um, this is just an example of how the panels are moved around on site. Um, and they have an ICF foundation going in, which also added to the efficiency of this particular house. Um, one of my favorite studies, I don't know that people are that familiar with it anymore. Yeah. Oh, what's ICF? Um, insulated concrete forms. Oh, okay. So it's like a styrofoam form and they pour the concrete and it's the, the form stays in so it adds to the insulation. And it's a really nice way. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with this. It's not as popular as it used to be framing the American dream. And what they did is they built two houses um, 
next to each other. And there's a picture of it here. Um, two houses to see what the comparison was going to be in terms of waste and, and um, speed and all of that. And the first thing I showed you was the graph that they produced. And then the, uh, these were some of the end results. So I think we can see that there was great savings in terms of just man hours, labor, labor costs, lumber, less scr uh, scrap and, and savings in dumpster. So um, this is a great way to build. Um, this was a panelized house that I actually had on the cover of one of my old books. And the, um, here's the panel going in. The owner, I called the owner to ask how he felt about um, the fact that his house was panelized. And he said, my house wasn't panelized. And uh, he, it was a spec house. And he had no idea. So he said, oh, you know, my house is not a prefabricated house. You know, that I don't have a cheap house. I paid a lot of money for this house. And in fact, um, it's, it's very well built and it's a beautiful house and just a great example of a, a panelized project. It was also built on, on a lake and it would have been very, very cold and they would never have been able to finish this house in the time that they did. And this is a house out in California that um, they took a loan out. It, uh, it was a, um, they had like 12 months to finish this house and when they sunk the piers, uh, three quarters of this house was out in the um, bay. And in order to finish it in time, they uh, built it uh, panelized. And otherwise, they would have never been able to finish in time. So while they were putting in the piers into the uh, bay, they were able to make the panels and get the house done in time. And uh, the owners tell me that it was, they feel like they're living on a ship because they're kind of right, by the, right on the water. But it's, it's just a great example of um, a great way to build uh, a prefab house. Um, this is also a panelized house where they did a lot of green things, uh, having a, re um, uh, a recycled uh, metal roof and a green roof, so that which keeps the house cool. And, um, and it was done on, on actually a modest budget. I think another one of the uh, things that people say when you say build a, an energy efficient house is they say it's going to cost too much money. And a lot of the people that I've been dealing with on the last book and the new book that I've just done is a lot of these people have done this on a budget and have been able to build very energy efficient houses by using very clever maneuvers um, uh, without spending a ton of money. Um, this was another uh, panelized house and, and had a huge overhang and was done on an infill lot. It's actually quite a small lot and it's kind of an odd shaped house. but. Um, it was something that the owner wanted. This was one of the early SIPs houses that I ever saw. And the interesting thing about this is that they were curved. This uh, house was built in the Hamptons in, um, in Long Island. And it took this man, who's an architect, two years to get a permit to build the, the uh, SIPs because the uh, town um, didn't know what it was and they weren't allowing it to be built. And here's uh, a photograph in the SIPS factory. Um, and here are the SIPS going up. They're, they're kind of, uh, this was a, a difficult project because it was, it was, they were curved. And you can see by using this method, they had a very open floor plan and very high ceilings. And it was, uh, um, using the SIPS was a huge advantage. Um, and this is a house that's actually, I guess it's not that far from here in Jericho. Um, and again, this was built by an architect for himself. And he put a lot of um, very interesting uh, green aspects into this house, um, including the fact that he didn't really do much to remove any of the trees and kept everything very natural, um, used a metal roof. And um, I really love what he did here. This is a cow wall. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this. It's a, it's a sandwich acrylic, and it's very, very energy efficient, but lets a lot of light in. And there's two hopper windows, which I think you can't see in this picture. 
but it has a fan behind it that lifts the hot air out and goes out the hopper windows and, um, and allows the house to remain very cool without an air conditioning system. And behind that wall, he has open staircase, which works as an exhaust system. And he used open staircase so that it allowed a lot of that light to come into the house and, um, and keep the house very bright. Um, this is a house that was built by uh, a man named Steve Glenn. He built this in California. And he was the first person to build a house that was LEED certified. And he wanted it to be zero energy, zero water, um, zero waste, et cetera. And again, he put a lot of the different aspects into this house to keep it very energy efficient. He does have panels on the roof. Um, he has watering systems that conserve water. They're underground so that the water is not wasted above the ground and so forth. And um, his houses are a little bit more pricey than some of these other houses, but they're very well done and very attractive. And what he did is, he's a single guy that has this big house, but he realized somebody else might need a different configuration. So he created the walls so that they could be opened and closed and reconfigured for the next homeowner. And this is one of my favorite houses from the last book. This is the powerhouse. This was a modular house that was built in an area in Massachusetts that was um, an industrial area. And it was very um, uh, downtrodden. And they wanted to have an example of a very energy efficient house. And they said if somebody would build a greenhouse, they would let them have the, the property for a, a very good price. So they end, somebody offered like $40,000 for the property, but they were not willing to build um, a lead house. These people ended up buying this house for 11,000, uh, this property for $11,000 and put in this house at a, at a, a very, very good, um, a very modest price. And uh, the area is called, is Lawrence, Massachusetts. And they even took the, um, the trellis is made out of the, of the wood from the shipping crates. So they didn't waste anything. And they put uh, metal on the side so that it would reflect the industrial nature of this, of this area. He's doing, uh, you know, John Rossi, he's doing uh, these, these uh, sort of airdrop um, eco resorts now. The idea being that you can have a resort that gets dropped in, set up, run for a year or two, and then completely taken away. Right. He's a very clever guy. This, this house was built also. I, I actually went on the photo shoot. I don't always get to see all of the houses, but this particular house I went on the shoot. And he's, there are no hallways, really, in this house. He said everything, every bit of space that was used was used for, uh, for a function. And I, I forget the price, but it was a very modestly priced house. Um, and this is a house that was designed by my friend here. And um, the, the fascinating thing about this was that this house had burned down and that the owners needed to get into the house really quickly. And John was able to save, he actually designed and built this house. He was able to save some of the wood here and was reused in the house. And I think it's just a really beautiful house. And it's a modular house. Um, and was actually the last house that was built by a manufacturer who was going out of business. So poor John was, did a lot more work on this house than he had um, anticipated. Um, and this is uh, a Sips house that I also is, is in uh, a new, the new book that I've done. And these people were also on a very modest uh, budget. And they made the house a very boxy like this because they felt it would be more energy efficient, less waste of, of energy. And uh, they, uh, the panels were leased. And, um, and again, the, uh, the cost of running this house is very minimal. There's a lot of really interesting technology in here. They have a, um, a basement that's a, a heat sink where they are able to store some of the energy. So there's a lot of 
interesting things that I don't think I want to go into right now, but um, they did a lot of nice things in this house, and it was not terribly expensive. They, they used recycled doors. They bought doors at a, a second-hand store, and they made them sliding doors. They have, they're all men in the house, so they decided they would save a lot of water by putting in a urinal. And, um, and the floors are all concrete, so they serve as thermal mass and um, keep the house cool. And even, you can see the door there is uh, a door that they bought secondhand. So um, it's a very cute house. Um, and this is a modular house that was built um, for the International Builder Show and um, also very energy efficient. The thing that was really interesting, I don't know if you can see on the left, but Dow Chemical came out with um, a solar panel and I had to actually maneuver a lot to allow them to let me use it in the book. It has just really hit the market and as you can see, it looks like part of the uh, of the uh, uh, roofing material. So it's really a nice thing. It's not as effective as some other panels, but it's um, much less obvious. Um, one of the things that I've been looking into that I think is a really great new thing coming from Europe is the passive house movement. And the thing that's interesting about passive house is that uh, it focuses almost entirely on energy. And so uh, they're not saying that you have to have uh, create energy or have, have solar panels or PV. It's all in building a house with a great, outs a great envelope that will require less energy. And I think there's several uh, organizations around this country and actually around the world that are working towards reducing energy and having zero energy by 2020 and there's actually an architectural uh, organization trying to have all houses be zero energy by 2030. So, um, and this, the, the people that have built these passive houses have used very creative means to, um, to meet these standards which are, are very, very rigid and they can have very little leakage and they, they can use very minimal energy. Um, this is a house that was built for the Museum of Natural History in Cleveland and um, I don't know if this is the best way to do it but they built a house using um, SIPs with panels on top of it. So it's a double wall and um, uh, they, it, you, again, it, it keeps most of the heat in and the, um, and, uh, the, or the cold air when it's hot. And um, all of these houses, passive houses, have to have an energy exchanger. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with that. I, I, for me, it's kind of magical. It takes either the heat or the cold and it exchanges it with the fresh air outside, but keeps the heat and the cold in, which is, to me, I, I can't even imagine how that happens, but it does. <laughs> And they're used in all of these. This house is on uh, the cover of my new book, and it's um, in uh, Maine. And this this house was built with just sips. And the uh, architect uh, that designed this house studied in Germany and brought back many of the techniques that they developed in Germany, where actually the passive house movement started. Um, these. Um, Houses, a lot of these passive houses have a laundry spinner instead of a, um, um, a dryer. Dryers use about 3,000 watts of, of energy electricity, whereas these use about 300. And they don't um, fade clothes and um, ruin the clothes. They do come out slightly damp, but here they were hanging the clothes up. And uh, a lot of the people are using these because they use so much less energy than uh, regular dryers. And this is another uh, way that um, they've achieved passive house in this country, and this was with a insulated concrete wall. So this was uh, pre-insulated, and, um, and this house went up in, I think, in two days. 
um, and it's also very, very, very energy efficient. This builder's been doing this uh, for, for a while. He's built a few houses this way, and uh, these are in North Carolina, and I asked him, would, would you be able to do this in the north? And he said, absolutely. They, it's a very uh, good way of insulating a house. And this was a house that was built in Bethesda, and this is another passive house. These are, there have not been a lot of passive house built in this country, and so I think most of them uh, that, well, all, almost all of them that were built prefab are in here. And uh, this was also built with SIPs. Um, one of the ways that they're able to check and make sure um, is with um, the uh, camera that shows the ultraviolet, and they can see where there's leakages of air. And so they, you can see there is some leakage around here, and they actually fix that thermal imaging. Um, this is a house that um, is up here in Vermont. Um, this is the first and only uh, Habitat for Humanities house that was built modular and passive. And this house has almost no leakage of air. I mean, it's below what the requirements are. And um, it's, very, it's very tiny, but it was, it was built by the Habitat people. Now, this is the one that they're going to, our lecture next week is going to be. Yes, about. and J.D. Clancy. You Yes, the architect that designed this is coming back next week. Um, he works for a very um, prestigious, actually, company in, um, in Massachusetts, and um, I think they did this gratis, and it, um, it's, a very, it's a cute little house. Where is that? It's in Jericho, Vermont? No, no, Charlotte. 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 Okay. Um, this is a project that was done in um, California, and um, uh, it's, the name of the company is Zeta, Z-E-T-A, and they just built a modular factory out in California. And this house is the only house that I know of that has a zero HERS rating. The HERS rating is the home energy rating system that's being used more and more in this country. To, the, if you have a hundred, it's typical of the, I guess, the typical energy store house. Anything that's below that um, is, if your house is, has a HERS rating of 80, means it's 20% more energy efficient than, than that typical house. This house is 100% more energy efficient, and it's the only house that I know of that's, they've been able to achieve that incredible rating. Um, some I just made a, some of the additional green features that were used in some of the houses that I've done. Um, concrete flooring, which um, uh, preserves the uh, energy with thermal mass. And here they use salvaged wiring for fencing. So it just saved a lot of money and um, used material that they had around. Um, this w I had never seen this before, but there was not enough light in this house, so they made clerestory, they made transom windows within, inside the house where extra light could come through. And um, a lot of the houses that I've uh, seen lately have clerestory windows, which don't take up a lot of room from the, from the house, but they um, bring in a lot of light. And also, if you open them up and when it's hot, the hot air that rises will go out of these windows. Um, and another, another technique that's being used is double doors to open the bathroom so that you don't have a big door coming out and it just conserves some, some space. A lot of the houses that I'm seeing today are being made smaller and people are finding ways to build them so that they use less space and um, and the space is used in a better way. This was the um, original log homes that were built, um, and uh, just an example of uh, log home today. Um, clearly, they're a lot more sophisticated. I don't want to get into a whole lot about log homes but, um, and timber frames, but these are another way that people prefabricate a house and um, 
I think they look great and in many cases are very efficient. And this is that house completed. Again, this was built by two um, nuclear physicists um, at Harvard. And again, they were on a tight budget and uh, they did a lot of the work themselves. And another timber frame, but this is massive logs. These are Durfell logs and they come from Canada and I'm, I'm a real fan of them. I think they just are totally beautiful. And here's the finished house. Bless you. And another house that was built uh, with insulated concrete panels, just to show you, they were lifted up with a crane and put into place and this was in Nevada. And here was the completed house. Um, some of the other ways that I've been finding houses that are prefabricated or light metal construction, um, which are built very similar to a site built house, but these are all prefabricated in the factory and then put together on site. And here was that house in light steel frame in Canada. And this is a, uh, a heavier metal more like a timber frame style. And the reason these people use metal, uh, this heavy metal, was because there was a gully that went right through their, through their uh, property. I don't know that this would fly in a lot of uh, places in this country. It, it certainly wouldn't fly in Connecticut, but they built the house over it. So they had two basements with a frame going across it. And you can see the water goes right, right through the house. Um, and this is another interesting steel frame house. Um, this was also done with SIPs and these people developed a kind of a peg to hold the SIPs to it. And um, this is in Connecticut. You can see how they're, how they're shaped. I don't, I don't remember who did this, but this was real feat to get the the uh, sips to be angled. And that was the completed house. And again, you can see the vast openings that they were able to do with the steel frame. Um, one, one of the uh, events that happens in this country that's very dear to my heart is the Sola Decathlon. Um, I don't know if uh, all of you are familiar with it or if anybody's been there, but um, Every other year, and um, it used to be in Washington, 20 universities from around the world in this country um, build houses um, that are actually uh, either zero energy or giving back energy. And this was one that was done by the University of Maryland, and it was such an exciting project. And if anybody has the opportunity to ever attend this, there's one next year in uh, California, and I think this year they're doing it in Barcelona. And the students tell you about what they're doing. And it's teaching a whole generation of people how to build very energy efficient houses. And they actually uh, develop ways to make the houses more efficient. They develop their own systems and materials that are very, very clever. This house has kind of a spine like a leaf. It's called the leaf house, so that, that brings in a tremendous amount of energy. And just uh, these are just some of the books that I've done, Prefabulous, which I sh we looked at that house earlier, and the book that's out now, and this is the new book, which is really based on, um, on very, very energy efficient houses. Uh, I believe that now ha people are, with the e economy the way it is, people are much more interested in um, smaller, efficient houses that have, have less lighter carrying costs and are um, easy to maintain and, um, and that's really what I look for. I actually, when I started this project, I thought I would never be able to find enough houses and I had originally intended to include houses from around the world. And in fact, I found more houses for this book than than I actually needed. There are 32 houses, which is more than I've ever had in any book without having any international houses because I think that more and more architects and builders are becoming interested in building houses that are efficient and I think more homeowners are getting interested in, 
in owning this type of house. And if they want one, they have to build it because there are not a whole lot of them available right now.